silent monitoring and energy transition revolution that the Nigerian middle class is yet to plug into. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. The profound improvements in EVs, that is electric vehicles, with longer lasting batteries that can now go up to 600 kilometers per charge, the little or no environmental pollution that the ice, that is internal combustion engines, in conventional, en in conventional vehicles emit, which has made governments in environmentally responsible societies to set dates for the elimination of ice vehicles on their roads. The increased productivity that EVs, which are smart objects like your smartphones and can be leveraged as Internet of Things tools by owners to galvanize increased productivity even while they are on the road. Far more importantly, the dramatically falling price of EVs, the average price of EVs sold by BYD, the world's largest EVs manufacturer, in China last year was 12,000 US dollars. Indeed, there are Nigerian manufacturers that are now advertising tear rubber, quote unquote, that's the newly assembled EV, SUVs, and ILOS type trucks for half of the prices of, say, Japanese or American equivalents. The unfolding EV good news for the Nigerian motoring public does not stop at the competitive pricing level. The Rural Electrification Agency, REA, RUE, and the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI, have signed the Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, for the establishment of a 150 million US dollars lithium ion battery, the chief component of EVs, a manufacturing and processing factory already reportedly putting up its plant in Nasarawa State. The question is, why are the Nigerian car purchasing middle class not enthusiastically ramping up the purchase of EVs with all the enumerated techno productivity, environmental pricing, and local lithium battery conferring exchange generation advantages? Joining us virtually to probe into the question is the Director General of National Automotive Design and Development Council, NADDC, Mr. Oluwemimo Joseph Osanikwe, and literally live in the studio with me is the President CEO of Saglef Incorporated, a U.S. electric vehicle manufacturing company with a new assembly plant in the Mota Ikorodu Division of Lagos State, Dr. Olubenga Sam Fale, gentlemen. Welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. DG, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. It's never too late to say congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. We wish you all the best in your tenure. We want to believe that uh, you will leave a legacy that will be so profound that uh, the world cannot discount in us. But uh, what would... How would you want to start? What would you want to tell us about electric vehicle technology and the position of NADDC? Okay. Electric vehicle, that is uh, one of the new uh, energy vehicle that is available world over. And globally, it's been uh, embraced. Nigeria is not left out. Nigeria is gradually embracing it because that's the future of the mobility. Electric vehicle is the future of mobility. That is certain. And we are already embracing that because of many reasons. Number one, the climate uh, effect of em emission. And electric vehicle, especially when it's battery, is zero uh, emission, zero emission. So it is attractive for anyone and for Nigeria to embrace it. So, and apart from that, maintenance costs. You can see uh, uh, the parts the engine parts that an IC vehicle we have, they are into thousands. 
But electric vehicle has only other traction that power the, 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 the vehicle. Then with the battery. So the number of parts you have to change at interval regularly are very, very limited. So you can drive the maintenance cost by almost 70%. Reduce it by 70%. So also the, the fueling part of it. The cost of fuel is going up. And with electric vehicle, when you compare the cost of charging, that is the cost of energy, and the cost of uh, powering uh, ICE through uh, AGO or through PMS, you know that the cost compared to uh, uh, EV is so high. So EV also reduced that one dramatically and that, that that's that's enough advantage or enough benefits that we attract uh motor user motorways to patronize or, or move to migrate from uh ICE to ev thank In you very area, much uh, we are also embracing that uh i'll come back to you uh dg uh, doc yes. you, you know would you i mean be you are a medical doctor Yes, sir. And one way or the other, how how did you your love for electric vehicle? How did it start? Uh, before we even get into what inspired you becoming an industrialist, setting up uh, an electric vehicle assembly plant in Nigeria, all the way from the U.S. L let's give it well, a human face the, first. The, 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 the short version. Honestly speaking, I was just one of those kids that could never make up their mind whether I wanted to be a doctor or an engineer. Honestly, the last day of jam, my dad called me and said, you know you have to submit this form today, right? Pick one. So uh, after listening to him, I said, okay, let me pick medicine. But it so happened that after I finished medical school, I went to the U.S. and specialized in internal medicine also specialize in uh, clinical informatics, which is all the healthcare information technology, you know, in healthcare. Uh, and I've always been a big believer in the danger uh, to our planet of climate, climate change. So I've always understood the need for uh, uh, renewables. Uh, so me being partly also just an entrepreneurial, you know, guy, I felt that there are avenues in, the, in renewables for entrepreneurship. Uh, so um, uh, just that was my segue into tech, and um, I just uh, basically kept looking into this. Uh, I've been involved in the real estate business and other en uh, endeavors in the U.S., and I just felt, along with my uh, uh, partners in Saglev, who is, actually makes electric vehicles in the U.S., also a Nigerian like myself, we just got together and said, look, you can make an EV company, I will make an EV company. There's no point doing this separately, we'll do it together. And that's really how Saglev came about. Uh, but we thought that it was in the emerging markets where the opportunities are. I'll come back to you. Yeah. Uh, let me go back to the DJ and I'll come back to you on some very interesting. I really want to know how, you know, when we live in the diaspora, we have a very rustic, very backward perception of Nigeria, many of us, because we, we cross-feed ourselves some, uh, some misinformation about Nigeria. I, 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 I'm sitting there thinking, because I once lived in the diaspora, I'm thinking there thinking, okay, how did you then cross that Rubicon of believing that electric vehicle would ultimately be accepted in the Nigerian market. But let me go to the DG for uh, the next step. DG, I just want to know, uh, we know that Ria and Naseni uh, at the last COP28 signed an MOU with uh, a Chinese concern, uh, an international a manufacturer entity that is setting up uh, setting up plant now in Nasarawa State, and there is no way that lithium-ion battery could be made in Nigeria. That some Nigerian entrepreneurs uh, would not think, oh, about time, about time to about time to harness the inherent opportunities of electric vehicle manufacturing or components. 
uh, manufacturing in some respects. Uh, what would be the strategy? I, I think I have a confession to make here, you know, and the confession, Mr. DG, is that uh, I was one of those in my capacity as a director of uh, a company that consults for the NADDC, I was one of those that wrote the curriculum for electric vehicles. So an average Nigerian watching now may not know that there is a detailed curriculum for electric vehicle from how to transition the average roadside mechanic to uh, working on electric vehicles to somebody who is doing a PhD program, say, in a formal academic environment. So, but this is not about me. This is about you as the person that wears the authority of the NADDC intimating the Nigerian public with the opportunity. So I'm sitting there wanting to ask you, how is the NADC, NADDC planning to unshake the opportunity of this domestication of one of the major components of electric vehicle man manufacturing in Nigeria? Thank you for the question. Number one, the, you will know that uh, electric vehicle, the major component in electric vehicle is the battery. In fact, battery accounts for between 40 to 50% of the cost of an electric vehicle. So what that means is if Nigeria is investing in production of electric vehicle, in production of battery, it literally means that gradually we are, we are, we are investing in manufacturing of, of electric vehicle in Nigeria because we, by producing the battery itself, we have contributed up to 40% of the component that is contributed about 40 percent of the component that means the component the battery can give us 40 percent of the uh, total cost of the vehicle which is local components increase in our local component so that is very vital producing battery in nigeria is vital and again apart from it increase our local content component we can be able to drag down the cost of manufacturing a, a vehicle and a, an EV vehicle. And if you can do that, it means it can, we can translate that one to, to, we can transfer that one to the buyer. That means the cost of acquiring an electric vehicle in Nigeria can also go down. We really appreciate that and we hope this uh, uh, big investment can start yielding results by, by, by uh, producing battery for uh, Nigerians. One, what other thing we are trying to, to do, just as you mentioned, the, the, the curriculum developed, which we call uh, national, occupational, national Occupational Standard. That, that standard is being critiqued and the validation has been done. It, by the time we are through with it, it's going to serve as the basis for training Nigerians the artisans and different level of training, either the artisan, the fresh graduate, and those people that already have the experience in, in EV, those people that want to manufacture EV, those people that want to work on EV. So we know that we get to a point where we need to bridge the gap in the knowledge. That is the people that be working on the, on the EV. And we need them to acquire the basic knowledge or have the basic expertise in handling that. That's why we came up with this NOS, National Occupation Standard, which we have uh, critique and which the validator has been done. So this also we add in the in in, in increasing the, the awareness as well as uh, help people to adopt uh, help citizens to adopt uh, EV usage faster. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Uh, Doc, before I went to DG, I put, uh, I, I, I made a remark that I would want you to respond to. You know, the misinformation in our diaspora, uh, technology and social media is now helping to bridge the, the gap. Yeah. But uh, about the time that you must have uh, started flirting with electric vehicle, uh, social media was not big then. 
And for, for you to have thought that, okay, I want to go into this and I want to take it to Nigeria, you must be, you must be at a very adventurous, visionary. Well, actually, I have to confess, you know, there's no point. I used to be uh, the typical diaspora that is totally scared of Nigeria. Uh, I, I, I think uh, counting, I think I've been in the United States now about 32 years or so, something like that. And um, out of that 32 years, if you add all the days I've spent in Nigeria, it's probably less than eight weeks, even, well, maybe now 12 weeks total uh, before I started uh, this. So, I, uh, but again, due to social media, due to just being inquisitive, I participated in trade missions from companies. Uh, you know, I, I just happened to have an interest in entrepreneurship generally. So I came to Nigeria, met with the U.S. consulate, U.S. ambassadors, uh, all those people. They, they taught us a lot about Nigeria. At that point, I started realizing that, look, the story that you get and the story that is the truth, there's a gap. A gap. gap. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying that there is a mismatch. Uh, so, um, you know, but when things happen, it gets blown out of proportion. And yes, there are some problems and there are some concerns. The security issues are there. Corruption issue is there, but at the end of the day, look, I, I was educated here. And I tell people that at the end of the day, you know, I, when I got to the United States, I had colleagues who were owing three, four hundred thousand dollars. From and, medical school. From medical school. And my own debt was zero. <laughs> so at the end of the day, as a diaspora person, you can think up, down, left, right, center you still owe the country something. The country invested in you. Uh, you know, and uh, again, the joking part of it is that, look, you're going to eat burger to the point where you can't even stand it anymore. You are going to want <coughs> swallow. You are going to want all these things. The so, emotional persona in you yes. would naturally, at yes. some point, yes. back on you in the direction yes. of all. So, but, but things are changing. Uh, people are seeing. Uh, and, you know, all my friends are shocked that I'm here. And I, as a matter of fact, I do live here for the most part, and I do go home maybe two, three. In fact, I shouldn't use that word because I go to the United States two, three weeks at a time, do meetings, attend to urgent businesses and all that, and then I, I'm back here for the last two years. That's how it's been. So I, I haven't spent a whole lot of time in the U.S. So this is changing. I see a lot of friends who are saying, wow, I, I cannot believe you are doing this because you used to be one of the worst. So, so you know, again... I'll, I'll come back to you. <laughs> I'll come back to you on how your flirtation, and now that has become a lifelong and, I hope, transgenerational love with the EV started. I'll come back to you yes. because I really want to give this a human contest and also use the experiences of people like you to hold the Nigerian middle class. The Nigerian middle class is still Definitely. reticent. Definitely. Uh, you know, uh, Toba Muno Lonko, uh, all those uh, ifis and uh, so. But you were at the very emergence of electric vehicle motoring. You had a, a kind of experience that an yes. average Nigerian yes. maybe. Uh, yes. Let me go back to the DG. Uh, the NADDC, I, I must state, is one of the national treasures that I want to believe has been changed media-wise. I, I don't suppose many Nigerians even get to know the strategic importance of the NADDC in uh, the quality, in the quality of the motoring experience they get, many Nigerians don't know. Um, how do you intend to engage the Nigerian public and let them see, especially the Nigerian motoring public, and let them see the whole gamut of things you do to protect them by the quality and standard of the vehicles you allow to be imported into Nigeria, and assembled in Nigeria, the quality and standard of the motoring experience they enjoy that many don't know, that even far beyond 
Standard Organization of Nigeria, the NADDC, is the first line of quality assurance when it comes to vehicular objects coming into this country. What are your strategies, Mr. DG? Yeah. Yes. The, the, thank you for that question because it's, it's something that uh, uh, we really we know uh, we are addressing it because a lot of Nigerians are not even aware of the existence of the, the council and a lot of Nigerians are not aware of what we are doing and what we have achieved. So we is part of what we are doing. The, the, we have started some campaign, and in the next few weeks, we notice that uh, we start telling Nigerians what and what we have been doing, and then and what we have achieved. So especially in 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 the area of CNG and EV, and generally what our mandates are and what we have achieved in the in the last uh, few years so just as you mentioned apart from tests and standard that we have uh, uh, established working with a standard organization of nigeria we we've done a lot and even apart from that we we are trying to work on ensuring that the material used for local parts or local components meet the standard before the, you now process the material to become part. And for that also, we have started building, we have a material test uh, center in Saria, and we have a component parts test center in Enogon that we soon be, be, be uh, commissioned. Also, we, we have a mission test center in uh, uh, Lagos State University of Science and Technology Kourou. With that one also, we soon come to life. So all this we have been doing in order to make we are doing in order to ensure that uh, the the quality of the vehicle that are coming to Nigeria and the quality of vehicle that are on Nigerian road meet international standard. So also to protect, we are doing that also especially the emission center to protect the environment. So all this we know. They are not being known by, by Nigeria. But again, we are using social media now. We are using uh, uh, electronic media. And then the traditional newspaper, all this we are going to employ in educating Nigeria or bringing our services to the notice of Nigeria. So we will start that in the next few weeks. And you will, Nigerians will know more about what we have done what we are doing, and what we are about to do. Again. I'll come back to you, Mr. DG, especially on the, in the particular area of human capital development and the inherent opportunities that the council uh, presents to the Nigerian youths, especially in the area of human capital development. I'll come back to you. Uh, Doc, we will go, you know, we will soon get to uh, the nitty-gritty nitty of how Saglev Came into came into being, uh, and why why he could why he mortar he could do Nigeria, but uh, I like to always give the human story element to serious because people can identify, identify. in many respects with uh, stories like that. So how did your I, I used the word flirtation initially. But I know you are in love now with, you know. <laughs> how, how did it graduate from, okay. Okay, so, so, so I want to crave your indulgence to tell you that without the NADDC, I, I don't want to forget to say this, without the NADDC, Saglev would not be here. I think it's important to say that so that people can hear the, without the NADDC, Saglev would not be here. So, because we did to, not even know. We, in a way, to the NADDC, is that also an investment? 1,000%. Uh, in, investment yes. conduit? Yes, into because. Foreign direct investment well, conduit to well, Nigeria? Well, well uh, uh, not directly the, the, the foreign direct, but you see, we have these ideas, and we're in the United States, and we do manufacture cars in the United States, by the way. We have these ideas of what we want to do, but we don't know how to do it. We don't know what the policy is. We, the NADDC is who has guided us step by step to where we are. They are the ones that are pointed out to us. Now, it's a very interesting story 
of how we got here. As you know, we started out in Ghana. Yeah. And uh, the things that happened in Nigeria for wise started. Uh, it was the NADDC that said, okay, you guys... Now you have a competitive you, you, you guys, business environment. Yeah, because too. every time they would talk to us, we would tell them, but you know, Nigerians have pretty much free petrol. Subsidized. And we don't know that they are ready for EV. It was at that point, they literally called us up and said, look, guys, give the excuse again, because that excuse is not valid anymore. So I just wanted to bring that up real quick. Very they, important point. Yes, very, very important point, point to, to make sure you but give... But ultimately, yeah. the removal of subsidy... Yes, did it. And yes. And presents the, yeah. the business opportunity yes. that speaks to the fact that now the... Uh, Alternative some energy. Or alternative. Some of, yes, some of that because you have to understand that while petrol was 50 naira a liter in Nigeria, it was over 850 naira a liter. Today, petrol is 1,340 naira a liter in Ghana. It's even more expensive in Abidjan. So it's not a matter of the business case. Even if petrol was 50, dollar, uh, 50 naira, a leader, you would still have the benefits of using an EV. Environmental. And we can go into yeah, talking so many, yeah. about all of the environmental, the cost of smart the ease, technology. Yes, the ease of repair, the yeah. ease of maintenance, yes. and the reduction in the total cost of ownership. Uh, you have all these benefits in the EV. Uh, so, so, but uh, now going to your question, yes, you, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the reason, you see, I can relate to how Nigerians feel now that, oh, there's no charging. You know, Nigeria has been a country that has suffered tremendously under the lack of power. We still are in this conundrum. So anytime you mention anything electric, the first thing a Nigerian is just natural. The human mind tells you, <laughs> no, it's not possible. But however, every step that I've seen here. I went through it in the United States. To give you a story, a very close friend of mine uh, was the very first person that actually acquired a Tesla. My classmate, we've been classmates actually since primary school. Uh, he, 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 so that's why I tell you the what very... What year was that? This was in 2012. The very number 27 Tesla that came off the lines, we drove that car. Uh, but I want to tell you this. When he picked up that car in Nebraska to get to Atlanta, okay, it took four days. The two of you? Well, I, I, I was smart enough to let him do that problem. <laughs> you know, I, I escaped it because uh, somehow, you know, he's an anesthesiologist. I'm an internist. So his time is more. <laughs> so I escaped that. But I knew he was picking up the car. And we were all excited to see the, you know, to test drive this thing. But incidentally, four days to move from Nebraska to Atlanta because you have to stop. There are chargers, but at that time, the charging system was very immature, even though there were Tesla superchargers. But to drive from Nebraska to Atlanta, the path. So I can relate because I lived it in the United States where there was, this is early 2012, where you have an EV, but you can't charge. So when people are telling me there's no charging, so again, I want to assure Nigerians that you see what we went through in 2012, in two to three years, you're not going to even remember all those things because all those problems are actually already being solved. I dri I've driven an electric vehicle here a year and a half. Every day. A fleet, actually. Well, don't tell people I drive a fleet of EV. <laughs> <laughs> but because I know I know you are a couple. Yeah. You, you've been to my office a couple of yeah, times. Yes. I, I have a confession to make. Uh, when it was about setting up Saglev factory in Imota Ekorodu Division, uh, one of the companies where I'm a director actually selected young Nigerian technicians. We call them uh, you know uh, automotive mechatronics technicians, we trained fundamentally. They are still in training because, you know, they want to exp expose them to global standards. So they are still in training. But having said that, I think it's imperative. Journalistic ethics demand 
that I made that revelation. So yes, so, 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 so again, uh, what happens is I can relate. But the good news is that in a very short time, this Tesla supercharger was all over to the point where you could easily drive that car pretty much nationwide on electric charge. Now, I actually right now hardly drive an internal combustion engine vehicle. I don't. 80% of all the charging for electric vehicles will actually happen at home. Repeat that. 80% of electric vehicle charging period in this country, in any country, is going to happen at home. It's like that in the U.S., it's like that. So there are other little areas where you have to make some adjustments. Doc, you know the irony for me. I'm sitting here thinking, most of us, notwithstanding whatever may be our perception or the reality of public uh, power utility, most of us don't sleep in the dark. We make arrangements. Exactly. And the same power exactly. with which we sleep can also... Charge your car. I'm not going to romanticize it. Charging exactly. equipment are still relatively expensive. We'll well, get back to that. Let me go, let me go to DG. DG, uh, okay. Well, right. th that is where we go in the direction of... In the direction, of, yes. Uh, uh, DG, uh, thank you for still keeping this good time with us. Uh, like I said, when I was going, going out the last time I was with you, I know that the council, that's the NADDC, has a robust human capital development program that crisscrosses from handholding the average roadside mechanic. We call them the Baba Mufus or the Eshobis. And holding them from ignorance to being able to work with modern vehicles that are largely computers and wheels. Don't even let's talk about EVs now. A modern automobile are computers on wheels. You have vehicles now averaging about seven ECMs, electric control modules, more, some far more. We know that apart from training those artisanal, artisanal mechanics, you have programs that mentor people, uh, undergraduates in universities. You, you, you are partnering with some tertiary institutions. That is actually why you have the admission facility in the Southwest in a tertiary institution in Lagos State. Lagos State uh, 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 University of Technology now, former Lagos State Polytechnic. How do you want to tell an average young person interested like he was in flirting with technology? How do you, what do you want to tell, tell an average young person on how the NADDC can usher them into realizing their dream of being automotive mechatricians, or indeed somebody that works on or that can uh, double into the world of EVs. Your floor. Okay, uh, let me start from known to unknown in this, in this, for this particular question. When I say known is from ICE, how did we manage or how are we managing the ICE maintenance? Currently, we, we, we realize that even the IC vehicles are changing. Some of the, the technicians, the ones we call mechanics, the technicians, some of them trained about 20, 15 years ago, and the technology has, has, has really changed. So what we have done is to organize training for most, for, for the technicians across the country. And as of today, we have trained over 10,000 Nigerian youths. We have trained over 10,000 artisans. And in, in training them, we ensure that we move them from the type of vehicle they started with. We introduce the new vehicle, the new technology, and we let them keep abreast of the happenings and new technology that we have in 
up to now. So we've done the training across Nigeria. We use our, we have uh, what we call sector skill council. So we have this sector skill is consists of almost 17, 18 different uh, uh, agencies or uh, people that have experience in different areas of auto, lecturers, people that are assemblers, artisans, all these people, we, bring, we brought them together and they form what we call sector skill. Uh, and they develop a cur cur uh, curriculum that we are using to train all the artisans. We trained artisans that we call the roadside. We trained fresh graduates in MIDAS so that they can design, they can design parts, they can design different things using MIDAS technology. So we've done all this for both skill and unskilled uh, artisan and skilled and, and skilled uh, uh, professionals in auto field. And that's what we intend to also do with the electric vehicle. We realize that electric vehicle you need to be to, to be abreast with the current technology concerning that. And that's why we have started by first of all developing developing the curriculum. Because that curriculum is going to be the guide for everybody that want to play parts here, that want to play role here. Just as you are mentioning, you you, just, you discuss with doctor. Doctor was trained as a, a medical doctor, but today is is now playing a, a major role in uh, production of electric vehicle in Nigeria. The same way, because of the interest and because of expertise he has acquired outside the classroom. The same way we are trying to do, we are doing with EV. There are some people that we acquire this experience not in the forward of university, but we want them to be granted. And that's why we have come up with this uh, uh, S, uh, national occupational standards concerning uh, that developed the curriculum for EV. So we have done that. And any moment from now again, we will be embarking on nationwide training of youth. We are, we are already in the process, and we are going to introduce our youth to the common uh, uh, things in EV, the common things, because in EV you don't have plenty of parts. So we need to let them know how do you charge, what the different kind of uh, charging connectors that are available, then all the little, little details that they need to know, and then how can you maintain an electric vehicle? These are things we are going to do. And in doing that, we are going to partner with people that are playing in that field. We are going to partner with uh, uh, professors, engineers. We are going to partner with uh, engineers that are part of the professional engineer, and also the vehicle assemblers or vehicle manufacturers. All these people, we bring them together and we are going to organize those training and let Nigerians know how to handle EV vehicle. When we did the ICE, after training, sometimes we give them some, we like call it take home, like a, a diagnostic machine, for example. And with diagnostic machine, I was in one stage recently, and they, they, when they were talking to us, one of them mentioned that we have been able to move them from analog to digital mechanics. So the same way we are going to do in, in, in EV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Where you left it, oh yeah, let's, you've moved past, you know, the anxiety, the initial anxiety level. Uh, now, so, so just uh, uh, picking up from where, so, so those anxieties that you had about charging, those are normal. It's, it actually has a name. It's called um, a range anxiety because uh, you are worried, where am I going to charge? I have 400 kilometers. But 400 kilometers is a lot. It's a of, lot. It's a lot. So, so um, um, one way 400 kilometers, 400 yes. kilometers will take you to as far as you yes. from uh, uh, yeah, the Yeah, actually, I, I'll throw out some data shortly to make people really understand this, what 400 kilometers is. But having said that, what has happened is every concern that I see people having, I've lived through this. I can relate to it. Uh, and I understand, uh, you know, how these are very legitimate concerns. But the good thing is that People also need to take comfort in the fact that these are problems that other people have gone through and people have actually worked their way through solving this. For example, charging. 
Um, I have a charger at home. It costs, uh, let me just throw out some numbers. If I were an Uber driver and I have our smallest product, for four hours you get 300 kilometers on that car. Um, it costs 2,500 Naira to charge that car. If you have the same vehicle in internal combustion car, 10 to 12,000 Naira to, to, fuel. Get, to fuel. Per day. Per, per day. day. Per now, day. and you are not going to finish that because when we, we've been here on the ground collecting data for going on three and a half years now, um, Uber drivers don't even drive 200 kilometers. So you will not even finish that charge. Not only that, if you have a car that has a 300 kilometer range and you are in Lagos, you are not going to charge but more than once a week, guaranteed. I don't charge more than once a week if I'm within town. So it's remarkable. It really if you're relieves. Doing inner, you mean if you're doing inner city driving? Yeah, because don't forget that the entire, everywhere we go to in Lagos is about 22 by 24 kilometers. It fits in a box of 22 by 24. We don't drive a lot. We're just spending all our time in hold up. In Abuja, they drive a little bit more, but it's not a whole lot. So, um, yeah, people need to, you know, but again, these, these concerns are, are, are valid, and our job is to actually make people understand, yes, your, your concern is valid, but now look at it this way we have to educate the public which is why we need the media we have to partner with the media very tightly to educate the public and make them understand because the truth is that the uh, gas station is at home mostly not where you it's just a, you have to just look at it a you little bit different you don't have to go and be queuing no you don't days. have to uh, yeah. and again people talk <coughs> about cost let me throw out some numbers to you uh, this is not a commercial. We just want to talk about EVs. So, um, um, an electric charger comes with, if by the time the EV is anywhere upwards of $25,000-ish, it will come with its own charger 100%. Even if it were lower than that, and I'm just giving, throwing out a number, a charger that you would put at home, you can easily get for... Three four hundred dollars. And you charge I, your vehicle at home? Yes, the charger itself. And we have trained technicians uh, uh, that will install it for you. So some of the lower vehicles, the more affordable vehicles, may not come with a charger, but you can easily have a charger by us installed for you at home. It's not expensive. Not only that, what we have done as a company is we have actually provided a charging platform. We have already signed contracts. Uh, this is not a commercial. People can find out there are malls already in Lagos where we have banks of chargers. So that if you are a rideshare driver and um, you don't have a home where you can install a charger, you don't have steady power at home, well, you can park your car, charge it for four hours, and you can park it at 8 p.m. at night. By 12 midnight, your car is charged. And you are ready for your next day's work. 2,500 Naira versus 20. Because if you are using a mid-size, it will be 20,000 a day. So, Is this utility very cool? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Much more. So our story is not just about an EV. Our story is very much about jobs. Because don't forget that a lot of the rideshare drivers quit. Because they can't afford to pay 10,000 Naira a day. They quit driving because how do I know that? Part of our testing, we started ordering rideshare rides by ourselves. We just wanted to know. Apart from paying uh, rideshare drivers to get data, we were actually entering rideshare in Lagos before we even started using our own cars for the drivers. Uh, right share or right hailing? Right hailing. The same thing. Right share, right hailing. Uh, right you know, share. is the difference between American, English, and... <laughs> okay. Uh, because <laughs> right share, what we understand right share to be in this part of the world is that uh, we live in the same neighborhood. We and then we the share. Same, yes. We go in the same yes. direction. Yes, but, but we to don't us... We really want to be wasting this thing. To so, us. To yeah. us, it's just the okay. same thing. The, the same difference between boot and bonnet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah we, 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 yes. English. Yes. But English. English. It's, it's just English. Yes. But, but uh, on a more serious note, um, 
uh, we find out that these drivers benefit. It is about jobs. It is about making a living. It is about uh, a guy who uh, is spending so much on a vehicle that the vehicle itself, he cannot afford it. Now, by the time you give him a piece of equipment that the cost of maintenance is 50 to 60 percent less. And I tell people, look, I cannot compete with a Tokumboka. But where I beat the Tokumbo car is this. Before your Tokumbo car reaches your hand from the port, you are spending money. Because that car has already spent 200,000 miles somewhere. You are already spending money on it. To be honest with you, I was shocked about two weeks ago when I saw uh, the advertisement gallery of one of the local EV assemblers. And I saw a sports a sports utility vehicle, a typical sports utility vehicle that if you're looking at it, ostensibly it speaks to the design, the look and feel of a Japanese or North American sports utility vehicle assembled in Lagos and the cost is about half of an average Japanese sports utility vehicle that goes for say 50 million naira. Yes. Uh, and I was thinking, ah, so can you cheap <laughs> buy? You know, honestly, I was... Well, well, you'd be surprised. So one of the things, actually, one of the hardest parts we had to figure out was how do we get these cars affordable to even come and do this in Nigeria? That was very difficult. We had to use my contacts, my, my partner's contacts, because he does manufacture cars in the United States to find the right vehicle at the right price. And when we were coming, we had specific vehicles we wanted to compete against. I'm not going to mention anybody's name. Uh, but, you know, uh, <laughs> given, given the paranoia, given the paranoia that is now pervading Europe, uh, because I was reading an article in the Economics magazine about two, three months ago, and Europe is alarmed now that uh, EVs, from a particular country are literally sweeping out and they come with the best of smart technologies. Yes. You know, Internet of Things technologies, like, you, you know, you, you, may even, you may even forget your, your, yes. your smartphone at home yes. and the vehicle will serve as your smartphone, will make you run your office businesses, will make you run things at home. Maybe you forgot to put off uh, the, the cooker, uh, let me go back to the DG for his uh, epilogue. Uh, Mr. DG, uh, we just have, as the person that personifies the standards uh, for vehicular objects in Nigeria, uh, the person that personifies the institution that also uh, Set standard for how young Nigerians are trained to become specialist uh, auto maintenance and uh, auto maintenance technicians and engineers. How would you want to sign out from this uh, from this uh, show today? We know we're looking forward to. Many other opportunities for you when we have issues relating to automotive standards. But how would you want to sign up today, sir? I want to sign up by assuring Nigeria that uh, Rome was not built in a day. Just as uh, Dr. Falaye mentioned, we have to start from somewhere. And with what we have on ground, we, we can really even scale faster than the, some of these developed worlds when it comes to EV adoption. First thing, we have to first of all disabuse people's minds because by providing the, the right information to people, because there is this knowledge gap. A lot of Nigeria, just as we said in the beginning, did not know or still don't know that you can actually charge an EV uh, car at home. Because it depends on the size of the battery. Some of the some of the car can be, you can use uh, uh, AC or uh, alternative currents to charge just like the way you charge your phone. 
the same way you can charge your vehicle at home. And if you want to use fast charger, some of the, 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 the uh, assembler of EV, some of them have charging, uh, fast charging devices, which you can still use outside. I was at a place one day, and I was there with electric vehicle, with EV vehicle, and a top person that we think to know about electric vehicle was Marvel. I, I was asking, am I sure this is real electric vehicle? And I said, yes, I have to take him and explain everything before I could believe that truly we could play, we could put electric vehicle on Nigerian road. So this is first thing we need to, to, to address. Bridge the knowledge gap, let Nigeria know this is possible. Despite the fact that we have power challenges, but we know despite the power challenge, we still uh, charge our phone, we still use uh, electricity at home. We still use electricity in our offices. The same can be done here. Again, on building the infrastructure, we know that some of the reason why the adoption is slow in Nigeria is the non-availability of infrastructure. And we know once someone has to start it, and that's why we are happy with, with uh, Sagle for starting it, and many others that have done a lot in, in pushing for adoption of EV. Because some people will say, oh, if I bring in infrastructure, we don't have the vehicle. And the people that want to buy the vehicle will say, I want to buy the vehicle, but there is no infrastructure. That means we have to start either by providing the vehicle, then investor will bring, come and invest in, in, in infrastructure. Or we first of all start with the infrastructure. But what we are doing is that we are building gradually, and that is a very good thing. Again, very much. he has mentioned something about cost. We know, I'm assuring Nigerians, the cost of ownership, the cost of owning a, an electric vehicle is far, far cheaper compared to cost of owing an EICE. Because we are only looking at cost of acquisition. We are not talking about cost of maintenance. We are not, not talking about cost of powering it. But when you bring the theory together, acquisition cost, cost of maintaining it, and cost of powering it daily, you will realize that electric vehicle is far, far cheaper. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Mr. DG. Thank you so, so much. We look forward to engaging you uh, some of the times, especially when it comes to enlightening our motoring public. Thank you. Uh, Doc, uh, I really want to use this opportunity, your signing off opportunity, to let you speak to the Nigerian diaspora. I've got friends who make sure, uh, and as an ex-diasporian returnee like you, I've got friends who make sure that their parents sleep in, you know, they make sure that their parents don't sleep in darkness every day. They make sure that they have a car for mommy and daddy that, that should take them around. They, many of them actually have cars parked in Nigeria and many of them are not even aware that they are returnees like you assembling, assembling electric vehicles in Nigeria. Because I know if many of them were to be aware that the assembly vehicle uh, of uh, there are EV assembly plants in Nigeria, you know what? I don't want mommy to go and be queuing when there is a fuel shortage, or daddy to go and be queuing when. There... So, what do you want to looking at your camera? So, so, so what I want to tell the diaspora is that uh, Nigeria that you see today is a totally different country. Okay, when I left, uh, there was virtually no middle class. There's actually a bigger middle class in Nigeria. Uh, going back to mommy and daddy, uh, believe me, you do not want mommy and daddy to drive a car that is going to give them problem and the mechanic is going to, you know, uh, be their best friend. Uh, uh, the solution is to give them actually an EV because now you're solving that reliability problem and you're also solving the power problem. And then you're also solving the going sending driver to go and uh, drive uh, to go and uh, queue in the gas station but more importantly i want to put your mind uh, as uh, Bola and i were saying uh, before the program there is an actual investment opportunity for diasporans because we all have cousins who are who need help and they reach out to us but there is now an opportunity to invest in the renewable uh, um, um, industry and specifically electric cars because 
Now, somebody can actually make a living using an electric car in ride hailing, using an electric car in mobility, using an electric car in mass transport. There are employment opportunities, but it goes back to that old saying of give, uh, teach people how to fish rather than give not money giving fish them and fish. For a meal. I yes. Teach a, teach a man how to fish yes. and you feed him for the rest yes, of his exactly. life. Exactly. Thank you very much, Doc. It's quite wonderful having you here. Uh, maybe because I'm a maybe because I'm an automotive uh, person <laughs> with one eye. Uh, this is where we'll be wrapping it up for today. I am Gola Oba.